SBC Media. Welcome to iGaming Daily, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by SBC Summit Barcelona, the industry-leading conference bringing you the future of sports betting and iGaming. SBC Summit Barcelona is where you can experience the entire global industry coverage under one roof. Join 10,000 industry professionals for three days of game-changing conversation and education. Get your tickets now at sbcevents.com. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of iGaming Daily where we are in Toronto, Canada as we were yesterday. But today we are on day one of the Canadian Gaming Summit Conference. And again, I am joined by Nick Ware, the business journalist at Canadian Gaming Business. Business. <laughs> <laughs> Mine went blind then. And we have Craig Davis, hey, the yes. editor of Enobies. Like you know, like Welcome. And we've got Jessica Wellman. <laughs> Can I say, when we tell you we are coming to you from the floor of the Canadian Gaming <laughs> Summit, that we are literally on the floor of the yeah. Canadian Gaming Summit? I am happy this is not a video podcast because we are, li- we are in a circle. L- we're, legs we're like crossed. a kindergarten class, yeah. like sat around the carpet. We're about chatting <laughs> with one another because we could not find an outlet anywhere. Yeah. The last time I sat like this was in primary school where we were singing hymns in the morning. So, so that's what is, we're going to do next. Please open yeah. your prayer books to page. <laughs> Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho is the next song <laughs> to sing. Um, and yes, that was Jessica Wellman, the editor oh, yeah. of SC <laughs> America. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Canadian too. Gaming uh, <laughs> Business. How are you all doing today? Great. Yeah, we're good. I that could do with not being sat on the floor, if I'm being honest. We'll try and get this through quickly before your legs start to hurt. I don't like how, with your lack of enthusiasm yesterday, even on the post on LinkedIn, it says everyone and it's, oh, as well, Craig Davis said <laughs> it. Like, I was, I was even a tag on on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, I, that definitely wasn't me telling Scott to put less enthusiasm in that post for you. I'll have words when we get back. <laughs> if only we had, like, a big ellipse before it. <laughs> dot, 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 and Craig. Oh, Craig was there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And Nick, you good, yeah? Well, my day started at 6am 6, 6 with a uh, cramp in my left leg. So that was a, a great start to my day. And yeah. now, we've so, sat and now I'm the sat on the floor, floor yeah. On so your birthday. On my birthday, yeah. So. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you very much. What a birthday gift this is. It isn't it? Cramp and sitting <laughs> on the floor at a conference, yeah. Perfect. We'll get your birthday cake later. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Perfect. So, like I said, we're on the first day of the Canadian Gaming Summit Conference. And you've all attended panels this morning. So we're just going to delve into a little bit about what was spoken about. Um, Nick, we'll go with you first. What was your panel about? Who was uh, on it? Sports Wrestling across Canada, so navigating the patchwork of provincial rollout. So we had uh, Salim Adatia uh, moderating. Um, we had Bruce Corkill, Managing Director, Canada Rush Street Interactive. Uh, Mike Maudus, uh, Brent McCurdy, Deputy CEO at AGCO. And Charmaine Hogan, Head of Regulatory Affairs at Playtech. Uh, so a lot of it was... Sort of going past look at the history of uh, Ontario, Ontario. <laughs> we it again. for lessons yesterday, uh, we'll know about, know about this. Um, looking at the transition of uh, regulated sports betting, obviously it's been over a year now since it was regulated in Ontario. Um, and yeah, looking at how it's got to this point, looking at the successes and weaknesses. Um, one of the biggest things we looked at was uh, the pervasiveness, pervasiveness of the d- digital province. Um, so looking at the traditional model, and new technologies, um, which is something we looked at yesterday with AI as well. Um, and yeah, looking at how Ontario could look at expanding their offerings internationally. Um, so looking at um, other examples in Europe, seeing how they've done it, and whether it can go into provinces, province by province, and then internationally. Um, yeah, that's some of the key key takeaways. Um, yeah. Cool, perfect. And Jess, what was yours about? Uh, I did the, it was like, Innovation was on. I mean, the name of it had very little to do with the Canada as an international innovation hub for gaming. To be honest, it was it was a discussion of what dropped this morning. Um, Deloitte, if you know the accounting firm, did a report in tandem with iGaming Ontario, just looking at the econ- economic impact of this regulated market that they've done. Uh, huge numbers, like 1.5 billion in revenues, 1.5 billion in ap- economic impact, basically 900 a million of which is wages. Before I get into more, I, I think we all might want to move to Ontario where our wares will be valued because the average iGaming salary is $103,000. Really? Yeah. That's higher than the average job, you know, the average salary in Ontario, $73,000. They found that um, the report was saying, you know, 
STEM jobs, a lot of like programming and those kinds of jobs that they're trying to bring into the province more uh, heavily weigh into that in addition to just, there's just been, you know, in the U.S., like you open up Kentucky and like 10 people are going to get a job. But here it really has been a huge economic impact beyond just the industry itself where people are, are making a ton of money. They're having a livable wage. They're they're being part of things. And the panel was a lot of operators, you know, Scott Vanderwell of PointsBet, Dale Hooper of FanDuel, Amanda Brewer of Kindred, and Scott Woodgate of MGM, or BetMGM rather, with Paul Burns moderating. And they were saying having the presence in Ontario was really important. These are international groups, but they truly, you know, it's it's not just like America light. You have to approach Canada very differently. And having people at that local level um, is very important. Plus, there's just a good talent pool here. It's not like a, a new market because there have been unregulated operators for so long. So there are trained, qualified people that you can bring in, which is something not all new markets really have the luxury of doing. So my takeaway from that is we get in in touch with Andrew McCarran, our managing director at SPC, and we say we're all happy to relocate to Ontario and work here for a bigger wage. Is that what we're saying? James just stopped paying attention and started Googling real estate in Ontario halfway (laughs) through my That's exactly what I've done. (laughs) I have planned out my whole life now. I have a four-bedroom apartment. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it was was a really good conversation, and uh, we'll have the write-up of that report on Canadian gaming business by the time you are listening to this. And I'll put it in the description below the podcast once it goes live. And Craig, what have you been doing this morning? There's been a couple of things. I'll, I'll brush over the second, well, the first real panel I did um, today was a collaboration for the gamer panel, um, which was quite interesting. The reason I'm going to brush over it is we spoke a lot about the learning opportunities from uh, from being here and it had people from BC and Saskatchewan there. So from a personal perspective, there was a lot of kind of background offered in that. A couple of takeaways that were quite um, interesting was the BC LC trying to, was it trying to end stigma, but with the words they use, and it was stressed consistently that words matter. So things like problem gambling, they don't use those words. And it's all about player health and that kind of thing, which I thought was a, an, inter- an interesting way of looking at things. And another thing that I've heard a lot from speaking to different people from different provinces in Canada is obviously nationalised TV. And you have all the adverts for Ontario going nationwide and the player confusion that brings with... That has come up on everything I've listened it, it, to. It has, it has. So when you've got like one option, one legalised option in certain states, but you're seeing... BetMGM, for example, Uh, I'm not saying they do take wages in them states, but from a purely player perspective, seeing those adverts make, oh, I'll use that then. Oh, no, you can't because you can only use this one option. Well, and you've got spillover from the U.S. too when you're broadcasting NBA games and and hockey games where we have deals that you see in arena that can be complicated as well. Yeah, so that that, that was one of them anyhow. And the first one was um, opening remarks from Duncan Hannay, the CEO of the uh, OLG, which was five minutes, and you might not think there'd be much to say on five minutes. Go but, read Craig, but, go read your write-up. <laughs> as, as there's an 800-word article on Casino <laughs> Beats already. He just had a few little, uh, n- nice little sound bites. That he opened by going about, like, the, uh, it's National Indigenous History Month, so he opened by talking about First Nations and all, all, all associated to, uh, again, the respect angle we, we spoke about yesterday, and the necessity to work alongside these, get them relationships. He called them vital to the success of the industry, which we're hearing a lot here already. Um, a, a few nice, nice little sound bites. He said he th- thinks the OLG has surprised many by remaining competitive. So he, he spoke. He spoke about that quite a lot. Um, markets across North America are following our lead and our world-class gaming model. I thought that could have been an interesting debate if it was actually a panel session. Um, and just speaking about what they need to do moving forward, how they can keep going. But, of course, with the news from Great Canadian Entertainment today of their $1 billion development opening next week and a hard rocker investing $350 million as well and just speaking about how... kind of maintaining the momentum, I suppose. So. Cool. No, it sounds like an interesting morning. I'll let you know what I did. So, going back off you, because you had Scott Vandervelle on your panel session i interviewed him straight afterwards um for an upcoming documentary that will be on canadian gaming business um in the near future 
uh, and it'll be on the anniversary of iGaming in Ontario. And he provided some really interesting insight to kind of the build up to the launch of the market between Points Bet uh, Canada and the iGaming Ontario and the AG the AGCO. Um, and just how they closely they actually work together is something I didn't realize. To Scott's point, what I heard this time last year was it was this incredibly back and forth collaborative open lines of communication with the regulator, which I think a lot of regulatory bodies don't follow that model. It's like, here are the rules, don't screw up. And these are more, you know, hey, can we do this? If we do it this way, would that be a problem? And being able to go back and forth, uh, that collaborative piece, I do think the U.S. is listening to and doing more of. Yeah. So coming back to what you said, Craig, was actually on OLG and how competitive they remained. So one of the questions I actually asked him, because of such the influx that we had in the market since it opened, is how can people, how can companies remain competitive? And he said OLG are a perfect example of this. Like they already have a big share in this market, yet they've still remained competitive and still remain one of the dominant forces in this sector. So you kind of just have to lean on others and use this as a springboard to just to keep competing in the market. I'm not going to go too in depth because I want people to watch the documentary when it comes out, but he provides some great, great insight. And he also does touch a bit on some of the First Nation stuff as well, and some tent stuff, but I'll leave that for the viewers to jump back on. Um, we are on day one. We're only, what time is it now? About 1 p.m. local time, we'll say. Um, you'll hear this on Thursday, so we still have Thursday to go and we still got to, to afternoon as well. Nick, what have you got planned for the rest of the day and Thursday? Anything you want to point out? I think uh, the one I'm looking forward to the most, the like one I've looked forward to uh, the whole week, is the one at two o'clock. Um, so that's the partner and play uh, panel. So that's a discussion about Canadian teams and leagues and sports books. Obviously, sport being a big sort of passion of mine, that's the most interesting. It's going to be about. Um, so we've got Aubrey Levi from the score, score bet there. Um, there is also Kuljeet Sindar from uh, the NBA, and also uh, Owen Welsh from the Canadian Football League. Um, so that's the discussion about how sports books and um, yeah how operators do, like the commercial relationship between them all um, so obviously especially between the score and the Toronto Blue Jays um, and obviously yeah how open are the sports leagues um, and teams uh, collaborating with operators um, yeah so that's the mo- that's, I think that's the most exciting one this afternoon as we mentioned yesterday got the esports one as well later today um, that's another one to look forward to and tomorrow we have uh, affiliates one and we also have about ad- advertising how to sort of creatively market it in a crowded market and obviously with recent sort of uh, advertising uh, regulations and sort of proposals that would be an interesting one to, uh, to see what how open everyone is to sort of talking about uh, what's going to happen next and possibly soon yeah and before we move on to uh, Jess and Craig how's your first day at a conference going yeah very good yeah so yesterday was sort of the early entry uh, a bit quieter and today's been the, the full uh, full shebang as it were uh, so yeah very good everyone's been very helpful very nice and uh, yeah it's been the perfect uh, sort of introduction to a uh, to panels and everything so yeah I feel like for you certainly when I first went to my panel my, my first conference I think it was two years after I joined because I joined during COVID and it honestly it was so good to actually put a face to a name behind that's, an email that's exactly that's what I've been doing like the last two days just yeah, hi, th- nice, nice to actually meet you, including Jessica. Yeah, <laughs> including Jessica. Uh, <laughs> for, last, for last year we've been talking and then finally put in a face in person to the name. So, yeah. yeah. That's, that's oh, perfect. Glad you enjoyed it. I hope it continues, mate. Uh, Greg, what are you looking forward to for the rest of the day and what's Thursday up? I've got a couple of interesting back-to-back panels straight after this. Um, one about Ontario one year later looking at kind of what's happened, what went well, what didn't, what predictions came true, what didn't. Uh, really good speakers saw um, three of the four on panels here last year so we're quite looking forward to that one um, the one straight after I mentioned yesterday Omni Channel looking at land based lottery online that, sh- that should be quite interesting um, and then just another couple of channels integrating cashless tomorrow probably an area that I'm not so adept in so I, I can't remember that's, that's, that's a job for tomorrow's Craig not today's Craig <laughs> It'll be it'll be interesting to learn to learn a bit more. Um, so that that's how my next couple of days. Very briefly, Perfect. I might try and, I might try and join you on that cashless one. Um, I might not let you. Wow, I've been so nice and enthusiastic. Depends today. on how energetic you are. I've been really energetic <laughs> with him today, and I've just had nothing to shut down from everything. I think he's still a bit uh, a bit upset about salty. yeah, a bit salty from yesterday. 
Um, Jess, what have you done? Uh, you know, it sounds humdrum, but uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be important. There's a, a gaming law panel that I'll be going to after lunch just because... You know, uh, if you guys listen to the North American version of this podcast, a lot of it is me explaining laws. Uh, And so I need to brush up on my Canadian legalese. Uh, So looking forward to that one just for my own edification. And then First Nations panel tomorrow. I think that's an area I would love to learn a lot more about and hear from those people. That's first thing in the morning morning. on Thursday. Yeah. And then uh, first pitch, as I mentioned before. Cool. I'll try and check my schedule. I will try and meet you on that one. Um, Perfect. No. I will let you join me on that panel, James, because I'm nice. We're going to round it up today. And Nick, Greg, Jess, thank you for joining me today. Um, oh, wait, no, I've not even told you what I'm doing tomorrow or later today. Yeah, what are you? Oh, sorry, none of us Yeah, no, ask. everyone's kicked off. <laughs> Craig's vibes and hates me. Um, no, I've got an interview with Martha Otten. I believe that's how you pronounce her surname from Igo, uh, I game in Ontario. Um, that'll be for the documentary to look into the processes pre and post um, the market launching again and just kind of get the regulatory viewpoint uh that's later on i think it's half three today and then tomorrow i'm interviewing paul burns for iGaming daily um that i'm not going to spoil but you'll be able to view that or you'll be able to listen to that at some point in the next few weeks and i think there's another interview there scattered about that i can't remember off the top of my head but it's going to be an interesting day. So keep an, air, keep an eye out on the websites for the videos and your ears out for the podcast where you'll hear all the latest stuff from us. And we will definitely leave now. Nick, Craig, Jess, thank you for joining me today. And to the listeners, thank you and goodbye. Thank you for listening to today's episode of iGaming Daily, brought to you in conjunction with SBC Summit Barcelona, being held at the FIRA Barcelona Monduic on the 19th to the 21st of September. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.